Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Tahiri, and uh, I'm a PhD student at Northeastern University. Today, I'm going to present my research on optimal adjustment sets for causal query estimation in partially observed biomolecular networks. Um, here's the outline of my presentation. The overall objective of my research is given a partially observed biomolecular network, estimate causal query of interest. What do we mean by a biomolecular network? As we have introduced it several times uh, today, it's a graph where nodes represent signaling proteins, genes, transcribes, or metabolites, and directed edges denote established causal regulatory relationships. Um, the Insulin growth factor network to the right is an example of a biomolecular network where nodes are kinase proteins. A biomolecular network is partially observed uh, when some of its components are unobserved. For example, in the context of a method like flow cytometry, RAS is unobserved because there basically there's no antibody for it. Um, so given this partially observed biomolecular network, the goal is to estimate the causal query of interest. And a causal query is a question about whether one variable causes another, and if it do so, how this causal relationship operates. For example, uh, in this uh, network, we can ask, does increasing the expression level of AKT causes an increase in the activity level of its descendant protein, ERK, which we refer to as outcome? Or um, we can ask what is the effect of receiving a specific drug on a specific patient. So these are all types of causal query questions. Um, the challenge that we face when we want to estimate these types of queries is that when biological networks are partially observed or they are large. Um, presence of unmeasurable variables in uh, biomolecular networks can lead to inaccurate causal query estimation. And in large networks, uh, measuring and including all the remaining uh, measurable variables into estimation of the query can be really expensive, and it can be computationally intractable, and it can also lead to bias in the estimation. So overall, there is an um, what happened. Um, so there is a need for um, carefully selecting a subset of variables with the budget of experiment. And if we do so, we can convert these large biomolecular networks into a much smaller version that uh, are more interpretable and provides more accurate results in terms of estimating the query. The specific subjective of my research is that um, given a partially observed biomolecular network, how can we select a subset of variables to measure while staying within the budget of experiment? Uh, now I will cover some necessary backgrounds required to know before proceeding to the method section. A confounder is a variable that influences both the outcome and the exposure. Uh, it, cre it creates this spurious association between uh, both of them. Examples are, of confounders are, for example, U1 and U2, which are observable, and U4, which is uh, unmeasurable. If confounders are not appropriately addressed, the estimated causal effect may be distorted or misleading. And note that I have put the cost of measuring uh, each of these use next to the node, and I'm gonna use that in the definition of a backdoor adjustment set, which is a set of variables that we, when we conditioned upon can remove the effect of confounders. Um, for any biomolecular network, like the example that you can see above, uh, we can have several valid adjustment sets. If we pick any of them, and if we condition upon any of them, we will block the effect of confounders, and we will be able to have an unbiased estimate of the query. But note that different adjustment sets have different experimental costs associated with them. The adjustment sets that provides the least asymptotic variance in terms of estimating the query uh, is called the optimal. Um, here, U2 and U3 is the optimal uh, factor adjustment set, and I will not go into details of why that's the case, but uh, note that the experimental cost associated with this uh, optimal adjustment set is not necessarily the most cost efficient uh, 
choice. So being able to balance between variance and cost is really important and it is one of the goals of my research. Current state-of-the-art approaches select a subset of variables by finding the optimal backdoor adjustment set. And they work in networks with specific graphical criterion. Their approach is limited uh, because they rely only on graphical criterion. They do not consider the underlying data generation process. So they fail in many cases that are common in biology with specific graphical structures. And their second limitation is that they fail to compare the backdoor adjustment sets in terms of variance and cost. They either output the optimal adjustment set or they fail to do so. And finally, they are rarely applicable in experiments with a limited number of biological replicates. Our contribution tries to overcome the uh, limitations that I just mentioned. And in general, we are interested in designing future experiments by deciding what variables to select and measure while staying within the budget of experiment. Uh, we require a couple of inputs to our approach, which is obviously the query that we are interested in finding the answer for. Uh, we need a biomolecular network structure, and we need to have cost for measuring each single node in the graph. And uh, another tuning parameter uh, of our approach is n, which is number of replicates in the future experiment. So we can play with n and obtain different results. So our approach is not limited to only assuming that we have unlimited data points. The output of our approach is a set of all the valid adjustment sets, which are ranked according to variance, and they are paired with experimental cost. So for example, going back to the previous example, uh, the output of our approach is a table like that, where it will rank all the adjustment sets according to the variance for estimating the query. So the first row has uh, the adjustment set with least asymptotic variance. And you can see the actual value of variance and the corresponding cost. And now one can just compare the first row, for example, with the second row and see that uh, it has a slightly higher variance than the first choice but the cost is significantly lower. So the experimenter have the ability to actually look at the list and compare the variances and costs and pick the one that has a reasonably low variance while still within the budget of experiment. Uh, now let's see how our approach, uh, actually uh, the workflow of our approach. We have three steps. The first step is generating K realistic synthetic data sets. Uh, each have N replicates. The goal of this step is to generate synthetic data sets that mimic future experiments as closely as possible. An optional input to this step is historical data, which refers to prior data from the same organism or from related systems or technologies. So the goal is to, um, if historical data is present, we want to uh, use methods such as tabular GAN or Bayesian network forward simulation to generate realistic synthetic data sets that are as close as possible to the historical data. And if historical data is not present, um, which is rarely the case, we're going to use reasonable or known ranges for model parameters and functional forms such as Hill equation. Now the second step is that uh, exploring all the valid adjustment sets. There are methods that take a uh, causal query of interest and uh, biomolecular network as input, and they will output all the valid adjustment sets for us. And the third and final step is that we will take the adjustment sets generated in step two, and we will estimate the causal query and pair it with the, its corresponding cost. So for each adjustment set, we are going to estimate the query over each synthetic data, which were K of them. So we will have K estimates, and then we'll take the variance uh, and pair it with its corresponding cost. And we're gonna do that for each and every valid adjustment set. And once we have the list, we will just rank it based on variance and have the output that we saw previously. Now, let's see how this approach works in practice. Let's take a look at some biological case studies. Um, the first case study is a simple case uh, where we have a treatment T uh, and an outcome Y. The goal here is to find the average effect that the treatment has on the outcome. 
Uh, this is a synthetic uh, case study, so we know that the uh, true value of average treatment effect is positive. So in other words, the treatment has a positive effect on the outcome. We use different data, uh, we use different uh, estimators for estimating the uh, average treatment effect, and I will not go into details of these estimators. Um, the output is uh, these box plots. The x-axis shows the ranked adjustment sets, uh, and the numbers below uh, the adjustment sets are the costs associated with them. Uh, the optimal adjustment set in this case is Z1, Z2, Z4. We took the same example and just changed the data generation process. Um, this time, the optimal adjustment set changed, uh, as well as the rankings. Uh, now, note that all the state-of-the-art approaches fail to detect the optimal adjustment set in this case, because the optimal adjustment set basically is not unique based on the graphical structure. It depends on the data generation process. And since our approach tries to learn and mimic the underlying data generation process, it was able to actually detect the optimal adjustment set, while other approaches fail to do so. And it's important to detect the optimal adjustment set in this specific case because, as uh, I said, the uh, true effect of treatment on outcome is positive. Now, if you look into uh, less optimal cases, they contain lots of negative values, uh, makes the uh, assurance about whether the effect of treatment on outcome is positive or not less for us. Whereas if we pick the optimal adjustment set, it will give us more assurance in terms of the effect of treatment on the outcome, which is positive. Um, our second results show something quite di uh, different from the first result. In this case, the variances of different adjustment sets were quite similar and cost can be a selective factor in the, this case. We uh, took the same uh, IGF graph that we saw earlier and used uh, two different approaches to generate synthetic data sets because we want to show that it really does not matter which method you choose to generate synthetic data sets. And uh, here's the results. The optimal adjustment set is RAS and all current state-of-the-art approaches can successfully detect RAS as the optimal adjustment set. But what our approach is able to do is that we can compare the, re the results together. So we can see that we can safely, instead of a RAS, pick PI3K as another valid adjustment set, while it provides almost the same precision as RAS would have provided for us, but at a much lower experimental cost. And this ability to just compare the adjustment sets together in terms of both variance and cost is something that our approach allows us to do, while other state-of-the-art approaches will only output RAS as the optimal adjustment set. And finally, the last result uh, is just for showcasing that how this approach uh, can reduce the size of large networks into a smaller network based on the uh, valid adjustment set that we select. And um, here's the conclusion. Our approach is particularly useful when optimal adjustment sets depend on the data generation process and cannot be detected based on graphical criterion. And this was the first result. Um, our approach can compare all the valid adjustment sets based on variance and cost. Sometimes the best subset to select is a less optimal one with a lower cost. Our approach helps in reducing the size of large networks and creates simpler, more interpretable network, which was the last result. However, our method relies on generation of realistic synthetic data sets. Um, the accuracy of synthetic data can be addressed by sensitivity analysis, and this is what we do throughout the paper. Um, this research was a joint work with a number of collaborators at different institutions. Um, I'm from Northeastern University, and Olga Vitek is, is my advisor. I would like to thank all of them and thank you all for listening, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Do we have a question? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, 
a really open question, but as I see it right now on your network, you're leveraging uh, your nodes by integrating this cost. Would you find it relevant to integrate the, vari the variability you can find in causal relationships by uh, integrating data in your edges, such as the reaction time or maybe uh, the intensity of the causal relationship, cascades and other stuff? Open question. Um. Yeah, that can be a great future direction of the work. Also, like uh, the I assume that different nodes have different costs, but uh, different uh, generating samples like replicates also provides different experimental costs. So in some like approaches, it's easy to generate um, lots of variables, but it's really hard to do provide each uh, replicate. Whereas in some uh, method, it's easy to easier to once you have find, for example, an antibody, it's easier to generate samples, but, gen but get, so it's also uh, a good direction to also include those into the research as well, yeah. 